Hey guys, it's Michael, and today I'm here to do my Cramathon slash 24 and 48 readathon wrap up. I decided to combine them, well, they were both happening during the same weekend, so I decided to combine the video for it. Now, the thing is, for the 24 and 48, I didn't keep track of the amount of time I read, but I'm not, I'm sure it was the 24. Uh, so yeah, let's get started because of course like usual I have a lot of books to talk about. Alright, the first book that I read for the readathon was Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. This is a middle grade novel and it works very similar to his uh, Hugo Cabaret novel. It's telling one story in picture, the other one in, in um, prose like usual. And then essentially it's going to combine together. Overall, I thought this, th I thought it was okay. I, I didn't think it was like fantastic like great or anything like that. I thought it was literally okay. The drawings were really pretty like usual but the story the story was really interesting because this one is about museums versus like Hugo Cabaret was about um, movies. This one was about the start of museums and how that gets started. It was interesting but overall I thought it was okay. I gave it three out of five stars. The next one that I read is Inside Out and Back Again by Tahalai. I hope I pronounced that right. I even looked it up to pronounce that, but I... This one was a really interesting novel. It's actually written in verse. It's autobiographical, about with lie. Um, the thing though is, she doesn't include herself in it, but the stories that the main character encounters, her experiences. So basically, she it's the start of the Vietnam War, and they essentially have to move to... Uh, Alabama here in the US and it's about how her experiences being an immigrant and those two cultures really really clashing like she was bullied in school and things like that I really enjoyed this actually I can really relate to a lot of the things that she encountered um, in case you don't know I I wasn't born in the US so I did migrate here um, uh, from the Philippines and some of the stuff like getting Learning English, I think I've said this before in a previous video, but it is really hard um, and I really like, because since this is in verse, Lai has a really good chance of and really uses it because especially when um, the main character, god her name is escaping her, me, but they call her Ha is learning English, it's really interesting how she uses the form of verse to to try to portray it because um, like I said learning English was is really hard like some of the rules um, it doesn't make sense like knives why so yeah I really enjoyed it overall I gave it four stars out of five okay the next book I have to prepare you guys for it because I'm gonna let you know now it is one of my favorite stories I have ever read not just this year but it's definitely gonna be on the, my top list but definitely definitely this year. One of my favorite animes is Case Closed and it's about this guy named Jimmy who gets turned into a kid essentially so he goes by this alias um, Conan Edagawa. Conan he derives from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle who wrote the Sherlock Holmes mystery. Now Edagawa I never understood that when I, I let me tell you I when I say I love this anime I mean I love this anime it's literally so good and I'm so glad it's still going on. It has like 700 plus episodes. It's so good. I love it. And so I was looking at the single cast which is basically like animes that they show in Japan that they all show here in America um, and I was like, oh, Rampoki Tan. I was watching it. Hmm. It said that the stories are based on Aragawa Rampo story and I was like, Edagawa? Why does that name sound familiar? And then I was like, wait, as in like Conan and Edagawa? And so I did some research and come to find out Edagawa, he is dubbed as the Edgar Allan Poe of Japan and I was like, pause, we have to check this out. The story I'm about to talk about, they did it in the anime um, but it was completely different. I actually, both of them were really different but I prefer the book version better um, but yeah. So I read the Edgar Allan Poe of Japan, Some Tales by Edagawa Rampo. Now this included a lot of um, short stories essentially. One of them I didn't read because it was so... I wasn't... I couldn't get into it really. Um, so yeah, but the highlight... it, The highlight of this is one story and we'll talk about it in a minute. But let me tell you about 
this author in general. This author, he really is like an Edgar Allan Poe. He creates these weird, dark, ambient setting. Like it's a really dark, these are dark stories. And one of the best short stories I've ever read was The Human Chair. It is up there with like Charlie Jackson's The Lauder. If you never read that, oh my god, that book is real. That short story is really good. But yes, The Human Chair, guys, let me tell you, this short story was fantastic. I gave that short story 5, but overall I gave like the whole thing um, a 4 out of 5. But this story right here, The Human Chair, wow. This, that's the only w My hair, what is going on? That is the only word I can describe with this. Um, and let me tell you, I will never look at chairs the same way, especially beanie bags, ever again. If you're really interested in this, go into it not knowing a lot, just start reading. I read this um, late at night, I was laying in my bed, and I was reading it in the dark, and I was like, oh, okay, it was getting really creepy, and then there's this moment, I literally bolted up, I was like, oh, crap. It was, you guys, this is so good, this is one of the best short stories I've ever read. I loved it so much. And I'm glad like I read it during this readathon because this was the highlight of the readathon. This book, this short story alone was fantastic. It was so good. And I read it, I read all the whole thing so fast, I didn't even vlog about it. Highly recommend this short story. The next one is um, I listened to William Shakespeare's The Empire Striketh Back. This is book five um, in the William Shakespeare Star Wars thingy written by Ian Dashner and narrated by a lot of people. If you saw my wrap up for June you know it's a lot of people. Overall this was really good. Um, I enjoyed it like usual. The production was really high. The line of Luke I am your father was really great and I just really enjoyed this. This is just like a quick easy audiobook. I mean it's really good and I'm glad I'm listening to it now because it's really making me catch up for the new movie. Um, in case you don't know, this about like Star Wars but written in Shakespeare's language, like it has the uh, pentamic, uh, was it pentamic pentameter? I forgot, I forgot the count of it, but yes. But it's also really cool because Yo Yoda speaks in haiku, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I, I really enjoyed it, so I gave it 4 stars out of 5. The next one that I read was really great, and if you've seen the vlog then you know um, I really enjoyed it. And that's The Perks of Being a Wolf. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by uh, Steven Chabosky. I really enjoyed this book. I had high expectations for it because people, t even on the black of the blurb, it even compared it to some of my favorite books, um, like Catcher in the Rye, a separate piece. I like growing up. I love reading those books, and this was just as great. I really love the voice of Charlie. I love actually all the characters. The thing is also. It does get a little whiny, but it's completely understandable. And he does cry a lot, which sometimes, like, I really don't like in characters that cry a lot. But it's completely understandable because of all the things he goes through. And especially at the end when you realize what's what really happened to him and why he's like this. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next one that I read is... Miss Marvel Volume 1, No Normal by G. Willow Wilson and Adrian Alfana. If you watch the vlog, um, then you know I wasn't as enthusiastic about this. The thing though, I think what fell flat for me for this was the story. The story to me seemed really like okay. Like it wasn't anything as the hype that it's trying to merit. Um, and in the end, I. I, I was like really lukewarm about the thing. Now, I said I was going to read volume 2 but I haven't gotten around to it and I'm hoping that volume 2 really does pull me in and I do enjoy the story more but as of right now, especially volumes 1 through 5, I think I'm just really lukewarm on it. I hope it really does get better because I really want to get into this. But this is about this girl who becomes the new Miss Marvel essentially and she has to deal about being a superhero and then just being a teenager essentially. I don't really have anything to say. Yeah. <laughs> next. The next book that I listened to was Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie narrated by David Suchet. <sighs> Bruh. Oh my god. 
you guys, this is one of the best audiobooks I have ever listened to. Now granted, I haven't listened to a lot of audiobooks compared to some people, and I just started this year. But the production value on this thing was fantastic. Suchet is one of the best narrators I've ever heard. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this story is about um, Hercule Poirot, who is one of Agatha Christie's um, detectives, her and him and Miss Marple. So he goes on a train um, to go to where does he go? Siberia or Russia? I forgot where he's traveling from. Um, but essentially, they get stuck and a murder, um, a murder occurs. What I love about this, like, this is what I always love about Agatha Christie's novels in general, is that I can keep guessing, but in the end, I should just stop because I'm never, I, I don't think I've ever gotten one of our books right maybe one but i've never solved it out like i've never figured out who done it how it was done why it was done let me tell you why Suchet was so impressive this book is especially an audiobook is impressive but also story wise too there are like 16 20 there's like 20 characters in this novel alone and they're all important his voice is perfect Oh my gosh, he does each voice for each person so different, I could literally tell who was who without even him saying who said it. And let me tell you, I was blown away by the ending of this because it's crazy. Oh my god. The ending to this is freaking crazy. Like, oh my gosh. You guys, it was freaking crazy, the ending. But I'm about to reach my 30 limit mark. Oh, okay, let me, let me calm down a bit. The ending to this literally, like, I had to pause it and rewind it again when Perot reveals the revelation and who's the killer and how it was done. Mind blown. This is one. I, the thing is, though, I don't recall reading this. I felt like I read this when I was a kid, but I don't think I fully grasped the whole thing. But oh my gosh, this has to be. If you love, um, and then there were none by her, this one takes the cake. It was fantastic. Like, wow. This is Agatha Christie at her finest. I think it was. Amazing. I've also heard that her other stories, there's one about another one that was even better than this, and I'm excited. I. Uh. And you know, Scrib has like all of these on audiobooks. I'm gonna purge on them one day, but. Uh. So good. I love this so much. If you can't tell, five stars out of five. All right, the next book and final book that I finished. Well, I didn't finish during the readathon, but I read it and started during the readathon, and then I finished it afterwards. Was this Grace by J. M. Coetzee? Oh my gosh! Look, I'm so used to like putting the books right here and just using my library. Like I, use, I have so many library books. Look, I have the book. I'm just letting you guys know I have the book. But yeah, this is J.M. Cotier, um, Disgrace. I'm just gonna put it in because I don't want to hold it. This book is about this professor named David Lurie who um, likes little girls. And that's basically it. It's like a Lolita complex story, but deep down when you dig deep into this novel, it's really more than that. He basically gets caught in the scandal with him and um, the girl. She wasn't underage, but he, she was one of her, um, he was one of her students. Now this thing about this book is that it leaves a lot, um, I wouldn't say unanswered, it left a lot, I don't know what the word <laughs> or the term is, how to describe it, but basically like some things didn't get resolved. Like it just was like, hmm, okay, that, mm, um, <laughs> there's that. The thing, this book literally like, was really surprising. So midway through, after the scandal, this is in the back of the blurb, he decides to go to his um, daughter's house to see how she's doing. Something happens at the daughter's house. I was like, what? And it escalated so fast. You ever heard that phrase? Wow, that escalated really fast. 
something happened and it escalated really fast and I'm like what? I was like what's going on? It literally blew like threw me for a loop. I I really didn't know what's going on. Also, I think the reason why I really liked it was the writing. The writing on here was really I wouldn't say different because I felt like I it's nothing like new or fresh or anything like that but it was really profound in the way that even though he was a um he liked little girls the characterization I really enjoyed because now he is a despicable person too because he had some really like misogynistic and racist comments um but I found myself rooting for him which was which is really weird and it goes to show you how the writing is really good on here because I was like yes go but at the same time like what are you doing? It gave me the impression that like Kotsie really wanted me to understand this character and so the way she, he writes it sometimes he would do this weird thing where he would use the same word twice separated by a comma but one section would mean one thing and the other thing would mean something else. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm definitely gonna seek out more of his works that's for sure. I, I think he's an author too, definitely, for me to read. I really like his writing. Uh, so, yeah, those are all the books that I read during the readathon. I read one, eight books. High five! <laughs> um, I didn't complete all the challenges um, because one of them was like a novella, and if you saw, I'm not gonna go get it, but if you saw, um, I was gonna read Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, but that was like, yeah, I was gonna read this, but that was like, like too much referency booky like so uh, I'm gonna read it soon but um I don't think I'm gonna be doing it anytime soon uh if you did the readathon or if you read any of the books let me know and until then I'll see you guys till later bye you guys I'm so glad I did this video because when I do my wrap up it won't be so long <laughs>